Hi, welcome back to my channel. This episode is entitled The Covenant Promise. As I commune with the Lord, I am starting over again. And though I continue to read the books of the Ethiopian Bible, I will continue in the word of the Lord. Because no matter how many times we study his word, a fresh anointing is always available. I never understood why the Lord would have struck Moses down because it seemed to happen suddenly. But it became clear to me when he established the covenant with Abraham. After these things, the word of the Lord came unto Abram in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abram, I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. And he brought him forth abroad and said, Look now toward heaven and tell the stars if thou be able to number them. And he said unto him, so shall thy seed be. And he believed the Lord, and he counted it to him for righteousness. Abraham still asked the Lord how he would know that he would inherit the land. The Lord had him take an heifer, a goat, and a ram, all three years old, and divide them in half. He also took a turtle dove and a pigeon left whole and placed them all on an altar. With the halves laid one against the other. Abraham watched over the offering and as he did so, he fell into a deep sleep. The Lord revealed to Abraham that his seed would be strangers. They would serve them for 400 years in a land that wasn't theirs, but that he would judge that nation. This is where it was revealed to me the importance of a covenant with the Lord. And it came to pass that when the sun went down and it was dark, Behold, a smoking furnace and a burning lamp that passed between those pieces. In the same day, the Lord made a covenant with Abram, saying, Unto thy seed have I given this land, from the river of Egypt unto the great river Euphrates. Now we will go to the book of Jeremiah to clarify why Moses was almost killed for not heeding the seriousness of the covenant. Please pay attention as this pertains to the slavery of the Israelites, brethren, natives, and even foreigners throughout history. Therefore, says the Lord, you have not obeyed me. You have not proclaimed liberty to your brother and your countrymen. Behold, listen very carefully. I am proclaiming liberty to you. Liberty to be put to the sword. Liberty to be ravaged by the virulent disease. And liberty to be decimated by famine, says the Lord. And I will make you a horror and a warning to all the kingdoms of the earth. The men who have violated my covenant, who have not kept the terms of the solemn pledge, which they made before me when they split the sacrificial calf in half. And then afterwards, 
walked between its separated pieces, sealing their pledge to me by placing a curse on themselves should they violate the covenant those men i will make like the calf now this is a part of the covenant that the lord made with abraham and if moses whom the lord talked with face to face barely escaped with his life then imagine those who refuse to repent and honor the portion of the agreement mentioned above. The egregious sins that still exist this day. The laws that testify of the blatant disregard of the word of the Lord. This is my covenant which you shall keep between me and you and thy seed after thee. Every man child among you shall be circumcised. Now I want to touch on another post, the lie that polygamy is okay. Even though Sarah gave Hagar to Abraham to be his wife, the covenant was with Abraham and Sarah. This is the marriage that God recognized Abraham loved his son Ishmael and pleaded with the Lord to accept him, to bless him. The Lord acknowledged his request, but it was not the same as the eternal covenant promise. And Abraham said unto God, O oh, that Ishmael might live before thee. And God said, Sarah, thy wife, shall bear thee a son indeed, and thou shalt call his name Isaac, and I will establish my covenant with him for an everlasting covenant, and with his seed after him. And as for Ishmael, I have heard thee. Behold, I have blessed him, and will make him fruitful, and will multiply him exceedingly. Twelve princes shall he beget, and I will make him a great nation. But my covenant will I establish with Isaac, which Sarah shall bear unto thee at this set time in the next year. Let's delve into this relationship between God and Abraham and how beautiful it is to be chosen by him. He loved Abraham so much that had it been possible, Sodom and Gomorrah would not have been destroyed. Abraham interceded that if from 50 down to 10 righteous men were found in the city, that they would be spared. Take heed to how cancerous the sins of the city had spread. But before they lay down, the men of the city, even the men of Sodom, compassed the house round, both old and young, all the people from every quarter. Lot was even willing to give his two virgin daughters to satisfy their perversity, but it would not. And they said, Stand back. And they said again, This fellow came in to sojourn, and he will needs be a judge. Now we will deal worse with thee than with them. And they pressed sore upon the man, even Lot, and came near to break the door. Is anyone seeing the depravity in all of this? After the angels struck them with blindness, these men exhausted themselves, still trying to find the door to defile themselves before the Lord. His daughter had husbands that even after everything that was happening, 
refused to leave. And Lot went out and spake unto his sons-in-law, which married his daughters, and said, Up, get you out of this place, for the Lord will destroy this city. But he seemed as one that mocked unto his sons-in-law. God's love for Abraham saved Lot from destruction. Behold, now this city is near to flee unto, and it is a little one. Oh, let me escape thither. Is it not a little one? And my soul shall live. And he said unto him, See, I have accepted thee concerning this thing also, that I will not overthrow the city for the which thou hast spoken. Haste thee, escape thither, for I cannot do anything till thou be come thither. Therefore the name of the city was called Zor. Let me reiterate that even after all that, it wasn't enough for Lot's wife. It is sad when you don't meditate on the goodness of the Lord, when his mercy is openly displayed and still rejected by men. It is a pitiful thing. As a parent, I want to make a pivotal statement. The choices that we make, even in our youth, can affect us for generations. Lot chose to live in Sodom. And even though he escaped to Zor, something happened that made him decide to leave there with his two daughters to live in a cave. They were deeply scarred from all that happened. Both daughters got their own father drunk and slept with him so that they could preserve seed of their father. From them came the Ammonites and the Moabites. Both had a long history of conflict with the Israelites, even as their kinsfolks while continually sinning against God. Yet I digress. Because Abraham is the father of many nations, the covenant binds all these nations. Disobedience leads to judgment. That is the curse on this land, on Mystery Babylon. I always say that people deceive themselves into thinking they are entitled to live how they see fit and that they should not be judged, that they will remain asleep forever and not reap the consequences for their actions. God has expectations for his covenant blessings. Number one. When Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to him and said, I am God Almighty. Walk habitually before me with integrity, knowing that you are always in my presence and be blameless and complete in obedience to me. Number two. Then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Say to all the congregation of the children of Israel, You shall be holy, for I, the Lord your God, am holy. And number three, If it were not possible, he would not have commanded it of us. So prepare your minds for action. Be completely sober in spirit, steadfast, self-disciplined, spiritually and morally alert. 
Fix your hope completely on the grace of God that is coming to you when Jesus Christ is revealed. Live as obedient children of God. Do not be conformed to the evil desires which governed you in your ignorance before you knew the requirements and transforming power of the good news regarding salvation. But like the Holy One who called you, be holy yourselves in all your conduct. Be set apart from the world by your godly character and moral courage. Because it is written, you shall be holy, set apart, for I am holy. Always coming from a place of love and in truth. And again, I humbly offer you some additional resources as the Lord is bringing them to me. As this prophet has described, given to her from God, so that you may prepare for what is to come. Click the link below. The end times are upon us, and because of my love for the Lord and my family and for you, and the great sorrow that I feel as I see those around me walking in oblivious darkness, I feel compelled to provide celestial teachings to you. The links are referenced but inactive on the vlogs, but are available on the blog slash podcast pages of my site at benevolentwoman.com. Please visit Celestial site, the Master's Voice Prophecy blog. Thank you again.